Hi, I'm Corey Gorechrist. I'm Dr. Vincent West. And here at Phantasm Podcast, we wanted to bring you sick fucks something very, very special from the bottom of our black hearts. And we have the horror legend Ken Foray in a almost two and a half hour interview, if I'm not mistaken. Two and a half hours, and uh, it's uncut, it's raw, it's very uh, intimate, and it's probably the coolest thing me and the doctor here have ever done. A very special interview from a very special guy, and to be a fan and actually get to sit down and, and uh, get this type of interview, I, I know I don't know about you, I wasn't expecting it to be as candid and as in depth as he took it. So it's very very introspective on his part, and I I blew me the fuck away. Well said, well said. Well, we won't keep you guys waiting any longer. And there is no episode for this one. This is all the interview, just for you. So sit back and enjoy. And remember, when there is no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. Take care, guys. Stay fucking gory. My name is Tim Corey, and you're listening to the Phantasm Podcast. In 1968, George Romero brought us Night of the Living Dead. It became the classic horror film of its time. Now, George Romero brings us the most intensely shocking motion picture experience for all time. Dawn of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead contains scenes of violence that may be considered shocking. No one under 17 will be admitted. Wake up, sucker. We're thieves and we're bad guys. That's exactly what we are. We've got to find our own way. Every dead body becomes one of them. It gets up and kills. The people it kills get up and kill. Jesus Christ. Maniacs. The dead body must be exterminated, either by destroying the brain or severing the brain from the rest of the body. Because they still believe there's respect in dying. Hello. No more room in hell. The dead will walk here. Well, we're here with the the horror icon, Ken Foray. How you doing? I'm doing very well. How about yourself? Doing awesome, doing awesome. And it's uh, good, good. definitely an honor to have you on. Yeah, how did you uh, how did you get interested in, in uh, acting? What got you interested in that? They started doing plays. That's cool. Yeah. What were well, some I'm, of the uh, the, the Broadway plays you did? Off Broadway, off and off, off and off, off Broadway and off off Broadway. Uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin, Midnight Express, Blues for Mister Charlie, The Baldwin Thief. Those were some of the ones. Okay. Oh, cool. That's where I started. That's really cool. Uh, for Dawn of the Dead, um, it, it was great. Anyway, 
Um, there, there were quite there were quite a few of us like that uh, were resident uh, actors uh, for the Hazel Bryant workshop, and we did that for quite a while. Wow! And uh, it was uh, it was very uh, very very nice. Uh, Candy Alexander was another. Okay. Uh, and um, my God, my God, my God! If I can't think of this woman's name, she will absolutely hate me. <laughs> and I'm trying to think of her name, and you know exactly who I'm talking about. She's been in everything on television that you can think of, and in film. She's been waiting to exhale. And uh, Loretta, Loretta, Loretta Devine. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's been waiting for a tell. You know, she's the one that turns. She's the one who turns and and says, "Oh, she says, is he looking at me?" And then she turns and says, "Yes, he is." <laughs> <laughs> so, famous little line. I think they used that in the in the um, uh, promotion for the for, for that film. But uh, we were all at uh, Hazel Bryan Theater in New York, and it was just a glorious, glorious time. So that's why I got my start, and that's how I I got bitten by this. The uh, salt up in my in my lungs or uh, in the brain. <laughs> oh, got bit right. by the snake. I don't know which 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 out you want to use. <laughs> so so that, that that was the start. It's awesome. Did you ever think that you would be a like a Hollywood actor or even a horror actor? Uh, no, pursuing all that. No, 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 no. It it, it uh, the things just happened. You know, I think I was, I did, uh, I guess, start on Kojak. That was my first uh, film role, a uh, television role. Awesome. And then I did Bingo Long, uh, probably and also the Motor Kings, which was fantastic because I got to go to Macon and Savannah, Georgia with um, James Earl Jones, Billy D. Williams, Richard Pryor, Tony Burton, awesome. Dan yeah. Shaw. That's a killer uh, 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 oh, my, oh, my God. Marcia McBroom. And uh, you can go down the list. Of just a list of people. It's a great uh, the Indianapolis clowns. Yeah. Uh, just, just, a, just, a, just a. It was. It's a long story about that that kind of connects me with making in Savannah, Georgia, even before I, I knew anything about acting, even before I left the state of Indiana. Right. But uh, um, as a matter of fact, why not tell it? We we got time. Why not? Yeah. I um, my grandfather. My grandfather used to take me to see the Indianapolis Indians. Uh, play baseball that's a minor league team for the Cubs and sometimes right. for the Red uh, for the Cincinnati Reds yeah. at some point that's and uh, we, my grandfather would, he, would, he, he loved he, he loved baseball he loved he would take my cousin and, and myself to these games as little boys and occasionally about once a year there would be a team of, of um, like Globetrotters like the Harlem Globetrotters they right. were so fancy and then they were they were African American and they, they I wore tuxedos and top hats sometimes, and they, <laughs> you know, they had, you know, they had people in clown outfits, and they did trick things with baseballs and, and, and bats and gloves, and they were they were hilarious and a lot of fun. And about once a year, we would go, we would see the Indianapolis clowns. Hmm. Uh, so uh, my grandfather was from Macon, and my grandmother from Savannah, or. Back to birth, I can't remember which one. <laughs> the, and, and years later, my first film with Universal, we shipped, t- take me to Macon, and we're doing, my grandfather was a fan of all of the Negro Leagues, of course, and what they were right. called in, in those days. And he um, uh, loved uh, Josh Gis- Gibson and Satchel Page and those people, and he would talk about it a lot, and you know, he, he always knew who was the best baseball player in the majors or in the Negro League anyway so he said yeah who's the best this year Graham, Graham, uh, uh, we called him Daddy Daddy Mose who's the best one this year and he he bring out, bring out the, the numbers and who they were yeah. and um, so you know I go on my first film where do I end up in Macon, Georgia who do I end up what am I doing the Negro League because that's, that's what being along was about you know the Negro League and the team breaking away from the league, the league right. forming their own group and um uh, and then I go to Savannah where my grandmother was, uh, where his wife was from. And uh, who's on the team of the, for the Bingo Long Traveling All Stars and Motor Teams? The Indianapolis Clowns. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't, you know, I mean, what a way to start your career at film, right? Yeah. You know? So that, that's a short story of, of uh, I guess, some influences. I think my, I had an uncle. Uh, who was my grandfather's brother who died before I was born. Yeah. But his name was uh, 
James Middlebrook, and they called him Shank. <laughs> and Shank called James Middlebrook. Then not the Shank that you pull out of your pocket, but, right. <laughs> but he called him Shank. But he, uh, he, had a, he was a barbarian. Right. And he had a, uh, a traveling show that uh, he took uh, through the South and Midwest, and he had about three or four tents, and he, he owned the show, and, he, and that's what he did. You know, so that, that was the only person besides me that, uh, besides me, that's been in, uh, that ventured into the, the depths of, uh, <laughs> uh, where the great, great white shark lives in right. show business. <laughs> He's the only one crazy like me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's how I started. That's a little history about what, um, um, I guess I look back on it now and I say, what coincidence? What a coincidence. Or, or maybe it was destined. I don't know. I don't know. Some people might think differently. But it's <laughs> definitely I, very I interesting. Like to, I would like to think I was destined. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's very interesting, and you know, it's definitely a one of a kind experience for you to you know um, go on the path you did. And we'll we'll go to uh, inevitably Dawn of the Dead, and uh, yeah, I guess explain how how that came about for you. Uh, I was doing a play in, in uh, New York and in, in the Village uh, off Broadway, and sitting backstage. Uh, so then I make up and get ready to go on, and uh, one of the actors said, hey, Ken, there's, they, 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 there's a company that uh, they're, they're doing a film, and they, they, they have a character that you might fit. You want to try it? You want to go up and check it out? And I said, yeah, give me the address. I'll check it out. And I did, and I went up and met Richard Rubenstein and George Romero, and uh, after the first, I think I had the first audition with Scott, Galen uh, and David and then the second I came back a week later I believe maybe it was days later I'm not quite sure and I had uh, I, I, I uh, we did the same audition but with three other uh, people and uh, then I was told uh, a short time after that that I had the job awesome so that's how it, yeah that's how it happened what was it like uh working with George on in to me arguably the best zombie film ever made what was that like for you working with him and working in that mall and you know you know we were all very inexperienced you know? <laughs> and and we it was an adventure it was really an adventure you know it was you know I, I don't think any of us had I, I I was the only one that was a SAG actor at the time because I did bingo along in Kojak. So I had to be SAG. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I don't think that any of us had worked that much at, all, at, at anything, in, in, especially in television or film. Sure. And we were, just, we were just thrilled to be there. Absolutely thrilled to be there. And to, it was uh, fun. It was fun almost every day. There was something new, something exciting. It was fun to... Um, I mean, you go into a mall and you're victim all these these uh, scenarios where you're surviving and you're finding what you can build your your place in it. You, 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 you find a place to hide and then make it that place livable and right. finding the food and having access to all of these these stores and products and materials. It was it was it was it was great to see it uh, see it happen and to see it finally on the uh, uh, the first cut. And to see that and, and, and see what, what we created, it was it was a it was a lot of of, of um, uh, just 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 great times, great times. You know, I was very young; I could do my own stunts at that point. Awesome. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's awesome. I, they they, they dive on the concrete. I <laughs> jump on the concrete. You know, no problem. Nah, you still and, can. And uh, right. take a fall here, <laughs> leap over this, do that. I was I was. You know, 215 pounds, not the uh, butterball that I am today. <laughs> <laughs> you can still do your stunts. <laughs> I can say it. I can say it. You can do more stunts than me, I'm sure. <laughs> hey, oh, please, please. <laughs> Only back then, my friend. Only back then. Right. I was, that was, uh, you know, I can't believe I was 215 pounds when I shot Dawn of the Dead. And, and uh, I'm so far away from that now, I can't tell you. 
Right. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, but it was great. It was a great experience. It really was. And we had no idea. I had no idea that it would um, turn out to be the, uh, uh, arguably, the uh, one of the greatest, or if not the greatest horror film ever made, you know. Oh, that's oh it is. So. Now, you and, yeah. uh, you and Scott, who plays... Uh, Roger in the film, you guys had a really good relationship in the film. What was it like, uh, you know, off camera with for you guys, uh, chemistry wise? Oh, we had a we had a um, you know off camera. We were we were probably so uh, dog tired <laughs> every day. I mean, we, we, you got to remember we shot at night. Yeah, and so we had to we had to we came in. Uh, with Pittsburgh traffic sure. coming in from Monroeville every, and this is during the winter. So we, by the time we got to our, you know, after the first few days, you know, the, the thrill of being in the same car together, going right. to kind of warm bed, and we just <laughs> sat back waiting to get to the hotel so we could get to our rooms and go to sleep <laughs> and prepare for the next day. Because, right. You know, you know, that time clock was twisted a little bit and uh, topsy turvy, and we, we kind of. Uh, our relationship, we, we we had a good time. You know, we we were fine. You know, I think that the uh, we we worked well together. As a matter of fact, I you know I didn't and and, and I, I I had my niece here for a month and a day, and we were going through old paperwork and stuff. She's helping me um, get rid of a lot of things and mm-hmm. reorganize. You know, I'm downsizing a bit. Sure. <laughs> and for the first time in 30 years, <laughs> you can imagine. It's going to happen sometime. <laughs> she was here for a month and a day. So, <laughs> and she worked every day. <laughs> Seven days a week. So, but we, but we, I, I, got, I found something, and it's, it's a Critics, Critics Choice New York Times. I like guess this is a review. And it's, and it's from fans all over the world. The performances from the four main characters are all impressive, especially when one considers that they weren't known actors. Yeah. And it goes on about other things, you know, about me, but I'm not going to get that. But that, it, uh, that, that's, the, that's pretty much what it, what it was. I, I was. I've seen this the film many times. I was in Shining Wyoming about three years ago, and um, we screened the film. Awesome. And... I was a little nervous. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't sure if this was going to be. It was going to be dated. If it was going to be, um, you know, uh, a little corny for right. today's audience. And I sat there, and I knew I had to get up that food and that talk. And I said, God, maybe I should leave now. <laughs> <laughs> and, but, I, but I didn't. I sat through it. And I watched it, and I it wasn't. And, and I just read you that because this, this. Um, Critics Choice New York Times review because I really appreciated the um, the job and how really really good my uh, fellow actors were in this in this piece. Sure, I think uh, uh, Galen Ross, Scott Radiker, and David M. Gee were really 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 good. That I had and, and I, it's, you know I've seen it many times before. Shine, of course. Sure. And it's the first time it just, and you know, the, the uh, first time it just really registered just how good they were in it. Right. So, so that um, that was that was the experience for me with Dawn of the Dead. I had a great time, and you know, it was um, as as George has said, it was like cowboys and Indians. It was. Right. So, yeah. 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 It's good. Know, <laughs> not the correct to say that, you know, but yeah. it was. Well, it's funny you mentioned that. It's actually, I mean. If you watch it now, or if you grew up with it and you watch it then, it really does, it's a timeless film. It stands the test of time, and the acting has a lot to do with that. It's actually just a really good horror movie. You don't get, I mean, you get horror movies that have good parts to it. You know, it's it's a horror movie. It is what it is. But Dawn of the Dead is just, has something about it that is just so watchable, where really it's a horror movie I think anybody could watch, even though it's it's gory, it's got its, you know... It's got its moments and stuff, but really it's just, it's crazy. The vibe of the movie is so, uh, I don't know, maybe it's just because I grew up watching it a lot, and um, I don't know, it's almost, you know, it's got a good homey feeling to the film. It's really hard to describe. Yeah, well, most 
people, most people who watched this film when it came out have introduced their children to it yeah. and their grandchildren. And they love it as well. It's just so a great movie. And, and it, yeah, it just stands up. I, I, you know, I've um, you know, seen it somewhere. I've got cut it a few times on television late, late at night. Right. And, and you know, I say, oh, God, you know, here it is. And they say, okay, I'll watch a few minutes. And if I'm in there for more than four minutes, I'm going to watch the entire film. Yeah. And that, that's something for someone who's seen it as many times as I have. You know, <laughs> it, yeah, it, I can it, never it just watch part of it. And then, I, you know. take, I, I go on the journey with this film, and I think that's what happens. You have humor, you have um, um, murder, <laughs> you have slaughter, <laughs> <laughs> you have um, papers, you have, you have everything going, man. You, 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 this, and, and, and I think that's what separates it from other films. Because I love, I love the omen. I love um, uh, the thing. I uh, one of my favorite movies. Omen, my favorite movie. Oh, yeah. um, uh, the um, Alien. You yeah. know, all of the aliens, all of them. You know, I <laughs> love them. Oh, shit. I was a, I was a theater manager for the Bayman Corner Theater wow. in New York, across from across uh, from um, uh, Bloomingdale, That's and awesome. we opened. We opened The Graduate. We opened The Exorcist. That movie is the first one and I ever saw. It scared the shit out of me. I also opened The Producers with Zero Mostel and Gene Wilder at wow. the Fine Arts Theater around the corner of 58th Street and Lexington around the corner from Bloomingdale. And uh, opened Deer Hunter at the Festival, I think the huh. Festival Theater on 57th Street. And Good, the Bad, and the Ugly at, at, at another one on Broadway on the West Side. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah. Awesome. Just, um, yeah. It's a lot of good stuff. Some, some, some inside dope on a guy you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> so, so yeah, but Don, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we want to thank you for that film. film, for doing that. I mean, it, obviously, yeah. it, you know, that's your most iconic role and always will be, but I mean, just really take a second to like, thank you, because that's, it's one of the most, oh, one of the greatest right. characters of all time in horror and, yeah, I think you just did a really good job of it. I think it's awesome. Thank you, thank you. I'm I'm uh, I'm humbled by it, and I'm going to take credit for it. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> as well. <laughs> so, but but no, really, thank you. I'm all serious. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course, it's a great I, film. I'm truly humbled because I'm I'm I, yeah, I'm a working actor, and I continue to be a working actor in as many genres as I can as I can. So, yeah, we continue so to be I've fans. Lucky enough. Huh? So we continue to be fans, of course. Thank you, thank you. I, I you know, I, I'm just, I, I, I've been lucky, and um, I hope to continue to be lucky. <laughs> right. Yeah, in, in this business, in this industry, because you know it, it's, um, it's a very tight market. Sure. You know, it, it's not. Uh, I had someone. Um, I had a cousin who was a, a assistant basketball coach for a major university in, in this country. I'm not gonna mention the university or anything. But <laughs> he um he uh they they fired the coach and and they, so he he he, he, he coach he was his, the coach was his friend and so the of course the system went and they left and uh they went to another university and uh the coach stayed but he left. Right. They went up to the um uh what do they call that? The B League mm-hmm. or the NBA and up in Canada, I think in Windsor, and did that for a minute. And now he's doing something else completely uh, unrelated to, to, to basketball. Huh. And he was, he's a very good coach. You know, he's a very good coach, and he, and he should be coaching somewhere as head coach. Right. But it's a very tight market as well. Sure. And, and you know, these guys, they come in, they coach, and immediately they're gone. Yeah. You know, or if they're not winning, they're gone. If they if they win, they may still be gone. <laughs> yeah. And and if, and if they go somewhere else, they only get a few other t- other other chances, and then you may not hear from them again. And it's the same way as as, as an actor. You you don't know if you you always worry if you're ever going to work again. And right. that's for actors who have won Academy Awards or Emmys or whatever. Sure, you know. You know, there's, there's uh, people, sorts of work, whatever. <laughs> they, you're always worried if you're going to work again. You know, how, how the career is going to go. If you will, and, and there, there, there's a very large cemetery of actors who have never worked. 
Yeah. Uh, I haven't worked in, in, in 10 or 20 years. You know. So I'm very thankful to still be working in this industry and uh, still putting out product. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Believe me. I'm, <laughs> I'm knocking on wood. I'm knocking on wood right now. Yeah. Right, well, we're glad. <laughs> yeah. Now you're still here. I'm here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> we're glad you're here. Uh, moving on, uh, Stuart Gordon. Uh, were you familiar yeah. with him before you met him for From Beyond with Reanimator or any of the actors or anything? Or? Well, I, I tell you, uh, that shoot of From Beyond, um, I, 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 I received disastrous and traumatic information information that I uh, couldn't do anything about uh, so during that shoot so uh, I think too, uh, it, it was uh, it was not it was not the best experience for me oh no that's so yeah. something in yeah. your personal life happened while you were shooting yeah not, it was not uh, the best experience for me, and um, um, you know, a few things. Uh, it, it was just, it, it was not good. <laughs> not good, that. and I don't know how to explain to you guys. Um, we're huge fans of of the film, and you in the film. So yeah. if, if it means yeah. anything to you, we, we're huge fans of it. So yes, I, I'm, I'm not. Well, this is not going to be good for you guys. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, but this, this is not the one. You know, there, there are too many, too many things that happen on that film. Um, that um, uh, I, I just don't, I, I don't feel comfortable. I haven't felt comfortable about talking about that film uh, in decades. Wow. Really? Uh, fans, fans have asked me about it. Friends have asked me specific questions about certain things that happened in that film and I've shuffled, shuffled. I've even been around uh, people uh, who were involved in the film and I've, I've uh, kept my lip my mouth closed oh and wow we had no like, idea I never knew anything about any yeah. of that no no it was, it was pretty 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 well you know I was dealing with, with, with a very bad situation and uh, uh, did something very very uh, you know something to get my mind off of it and it was taken advantage of and then there were a lot of racial comments on, on, during that, that shoot as well so oh man it oh was, god it wasn't, my, it wasn't my favorite it was not my favorite uh, memory you know, we had no idea I would have never even brought that up I we're just no, fans of the okay. film no it's okay because the situation that prevented me from talking about it for all these years is no longer exists so you know at this point I'm, I'm fine about talking about it but um, that, there's nothing real uh, flattering there's nothing great I can say about it nothing flattering and there's um, um, you know it, it, it is you know it's just not my favorite right. not my favorite. The, experience, the experience right and things that happen on that set oh not, wow um, and that's yeah. the directors actors whatever it's always just bad huh um I'm sorry say that again the 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 experience just in general just with the actors and the direct just everything was just bad I'm sorry I well you know I got the, you know I, there were certain certain things that were supposed to uh, happen that didn't happen and I didn't find out until much later because I, I didn't see the film I saw the film on television oh, okay know, and huh. so I I, I I I didn't see the cut the uh director's cut of the DVD cut until decades later. Right. And so I was uh, quite shocked at what I saw. So that was, that was part of it, certainly. Oh, wow. I mean, yeah, so it, it uh, you know, I saw the television twice, and I said, okay, well, that, that's what we agreed on. You know, it looks okay. Like, well, so then I see the DVD, and I, I said, oh, no. <laughs> this, is not what we discussed. this is not what we discussed. So right. I, I left. I left it at that, and so it's, it's been, um, you know, it, it, maybe at some point somebody will ask me a specific question about something that, that, that I can, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to talk about it now, because as I said, the situation as of this year uh, does not exist any longer. That kept me from uh, talking about this, so I can talk about it, but nothing's going to be flattering about that, you know. 
Is no, there? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Don't hold, don't hold back. Oh, no, I, I was just, is there, is there anything that you would like to, as for us as fans about the film that you do feel comfortable talking about? Because we're, we're huge fans of, of you in that film. And the only reason I ever watched the film as a kid, I'm in my, I'm older, uh, but I saw it as a kid was because you were in Dawn of the Dead was the only reason I ever actually watched the film. Yeah. Right, right. Well, you know, I, I, I you know, the, you know, it, it, it it started. It started badly, and it uh, and it uh, you know with some you know there, there were just some things that that, that were not very uh, nice going on with, on that film, and, and and it started with with, with uh, oh god oh god I, I guess someone said the only thing um, only thing a n I use the word that the initial n. Uh, that they were told by their parents the only thing an end would want is a um, uh, Cadillac and a white woman. Oh my and, God. Uh, th- yeah, That's yeah. That was in the first, first two days, mm. you know. <laughs> you know, first two days, you know. And I said, whoa, where am I? You uh, know, yeah, exactly. Pro- pro- progressively got worse. I mean, there, there weren't too many more of those kind of statements, but, you know, there were some, some definite betrayals. So, wow. You know, me as a kid when I saw it and uh, just the whole film just in general but, you know that yeah I mean I mean Pantherell and that and all that prosthetics is, you know and, and, and it was it was horrible and, and the uh, you know the, I think that they, the the uh, uh, pineal gland coming out of Jeffrey's forehead yeah, yeah you know, that was yeah, you know, that, that was that was pretty freaky. You got you know, there were a lot of things. It was it was a pretty. You, know, <laughs> you got Barbara Cramp in S and M gear and stuff. You know, and yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Do, can you explain that, that scene, that initial scene where that happened? That was. That, was Barbara Crafting? Yeah. Was, 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 was sitting on top of Denver? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I came in and, uh, um, I came in from behind her. Right. And, uh, you know, it was just one of the, one of the bizarre kind of things that went on with that film. I, I yeah. didn't know. You know, I, I, I think it, it changed all of our personalities. And that was her, her personality. You know, that, that's how the, uh, uh, Pretorius is, um, um, uh, machine. And mm-hmm. it's, 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 this, this. Well, you were genuinely other, pissed uh, when you came in because you were like, you know, I, I told you to change, and she was like, I did, you know. <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they pulled her away real quick. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <Damn>, boy. <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> oh, please. Yeah, yeah. She, it was, uh, I told you to change, I did. That was, she was, um, it was, uh, she was impressive. I must say, she was impressive in the scene and she did a good job in the film. You know, and so did Jeffrey Combs. You know, yeah. and Ted Terrell. And Ted Terrell, Ted Terrell, who was a real trooper. Oh, yeah. I must, uh, I must say, he was a real trooper. This guy, uh, uh stood there, uh, in the, in, and at that, that, uh, what they attached to him, that, uh, prosthetic that they attached to him, I think it stretched for at least three or four yards oh. away, uh, you know, across the floor. And, and it was, it, it was heavy as heck. And he stood in that all day. Well, so, <laughs> And having to see you him know, walk around in that's probably pretty pretty nice. Yeah, so. and new, and he said to stand in the nude, you know. So it was, <laughs> you know, not the most fun thing for him to do. You know, I know that. Right. You know, but, and that's, that's someone else who I have lost contact with. I have no idea where he is. Does, does anyone know? No. Does anyone? Or if any of the fans know where he is at this point? Who? If he you know, well, the, the, the actor who played uh, uh, Doctor Notorious. Yeah. No, he's uh, he's passed yeah. away. Did he pass away? He did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. yeah. He's a nice guy. I didn't know he passed away. That's he's a shame a nice too. Guy. And a truth, I'm telling you, he's, he he really, you know, I, I was very impressed. You know, he just stood there all day, all mm. day in that, and he was wrapped in that um, uh, foam and and, and 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 glue and whatever else they they they. they it's dedication. Know, One other, well, I wanted to ask you, uh, do, did you, uh, was, was, was Brian involved as much in this as, as Stuart was, or was Brian not, Yunza? Brian Yunza was on set every day. Okay, so Brian, okay. Brian Yunza was on set every day. Because I had read before that a lot of people had said it was basically his film and it's got Stewart's name on it. I had read that because I'm a fan of some of his other work, uh, but I, I was. I, I, yeah, no, I, that's not, I wouldn't say that's true. That's okay, true. gotcha. Like, okay, Brian, as, as the executive producer, was there every day to make sure that everything was going well, and he put out the fires and you know did did the most. Gotcha. He, he was there every day, literally every day. It looked like the shooting locations for that looked kind of crazy. That one thing looked like it was in like an attic or something. The thing where the 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 machine was at. Oh, uh, that was um, uh, Charlie Band, Charles Band. Nice, the composer. Uh, and his father owned Empire Studios, which I think it was a former De Laurenti studio studios in, in Rome. Oh wow! And they they were Empire Studios at, at named. Empire for Charlie and his group, and so we shot uh, that in Rome, and uh, it was a sound stage, and they built that. You know, you know, we had the stairway and the you know the uh, upstairs uh, uh, laboratory, and uh, and we had Jeffrey's room, uh, the basement, and um, all that was sound stage. You know, the the whole thing was sound stage. All of the industry huge. Empire Studios had uh, many sound stages. It was, uh, it was um, similar to being in Universal's lot, you know. 
Oh, wow. Day, you know? Yeah, yeah. So they had, a, they had several productions going on while we were there. And uh, it was, uh, you know, it was interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. I, I, I don't think they kept it that long. I'm not sure. You have to ask Charlie Band, but um, it was, um, you know, it was impressive. Impressive for um, America to have a uh, studio location that that that, uh, that large in a foreign country. And he, he certainly had that. So. And that's where we shot it. Yeah. Right. Interesting stuff. It's I like I said. I I never had any idea about anything with that film because watching it as a fan, it's just another thing that I thought was cool with you in it as a when I was a kid. So. <laughs> It, it was cool with me in it. <laughs> yeah, that's why. It's, that's why. It, was, it I, was cool with me in it. I yeah, <laughs> it's just such a. It's but it's it's bizarre, but it's interesting. I appreciate you talking about. It. I had no idea some of the circumstances yeah, with it. I that's something well, I know, never knew. Yeah, I, I, no, 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 no. I as I said, things have changed in the last six months. And so, wow, you know, I I, I can't. Uh, I won't go into that, but I'll. I'll just say that um, I'm free to talk about it. So I don't mind talking about it. You know, I'm just not going to, I'm just not going to, I'm not going to, you know, I, post, I play the company line on it. I'm oh, sure, sure, sure yeah. Yeah, I'm, a, you know, I, 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 I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, put it up and, and, and sweeten it for anybody. Oh, yeah, you know, of course, of course, yeah. Well, yeah. I, you deserve to hear, you know, you know, uh, or, uh, you know, I've got to say, I, I won't talk about Right. <laughs> yeah, no, gotcha. And then you have nothing. <laughs> right. So I, I'd rather just, just tell you, you know, it wasn't a special experience for me, and, and you know, it was uh, one of the, the most, one of the most one of the most tragic things of the times of my life. So. Mm. Wow. Sorry, well, we appreciate you talking about it. We're going to yeah, move awesome. on now to an, another movie that I like a whole lot. Well, you and uh, just like very briefly with this, you had worked with Brian and Stuart on. The dentist also. So your relationship with them was. Uh, I work. I work with. I work with. I work with Brian on the dentist. Okay. Uh, Brian directed the dentist. Right. I didn't see Stuart. No, he wrote it. Though, uh, right? No, he, he wrote it. Okay, so he yeah, wasn't on the set. It, but I, I, I didn't see him doing any any part of it. You know, I, I didn't see him on the set, and so I, I didn't really have any contact with him. Right. And um, at that at that point, I had still hadn't seen from beyond except on television. Oh wow! Okay. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. So it was still, you know, you know, like I said, it was it was only a decade or so uh, ago that I saw it on, on DVD. I had no idea so, for the longest yeah, time. I, I did a, yeah, it was it was you know I saw it twice on television. And I said okay, you know. So <laughs> Isn't isn't the one isn't that one one where like the wife starts killing people or something weird? I don't remember. Uh, I think so. Yeah, it I gets really weird where thought, she's got like uh, razor gums or something <laughs> fucking crazy. I don't remember. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. That was that was in one too. I think he killed his wife and he gave her some kind of crazy gums. Yeah. In one. And I'm not quite sure <laughs> about two, but I did see two. But I think I saw maybe half of it, something like that. Not that much of it. Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea that Brian did that film for the longest time because I saw it when I was really little and I actually um, haven't been in the dentist since. I'm not even making that up. That's probably not a good thing, but that movie scared me so that's, bad. That's, I'm like, what we, that's what we hoped. Yeah, that's that one movie where I will not watch it. Like, that's one of the... I've seen... The Exorcist was the first movie I ever saw and, you know, when I was a kid and I loved it, but it scared the shit out of me, but... The dentist is something I will not watch. It's like the fly. I, I won't watch it. 
You know, I, I hate to fly. It's fucking gross. It is. It's fucking gross. I hate Jeff Goldblum when comes to fly. So sick. Oh god. Right. Oh, disgusting. When he tips on a steel pole. Oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's nasty. nasty. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> that's that's a phantasm no no. Is I, I that? Think it was, I think it was great. I think it was absolutely great. But I no, was brilliant. I, but I, I can't. I can't watch yeah. it. I've watched it a few times. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I think after the third or fourth time, over yeah, the course of many years, I said, that's it. I won't watch it again. <laughs> I'm finished. Dentist is on that yeah. list for me. It's a short yeah, list. But, but that, that, that's exactly what we wanted to happen. It we paid off for me. We wanted to feel that way. It paid off for you, but not for us. We had 50 million other people in this country. <laughs> we wanted, you know, because I, I, I really thought that at the at this film would would uh, make an impression and leave a lasting impression with everyone in this country that was afraid of this. And this would 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 it, it would cement that, and this film would be very very popular. And would and it didn't do that only for a few people. And and thank you, we're, we're very happy that you're one of them. <laughs> yeah, out of all people, my mom showed me that film. <laughs> And she was like, it's just a movie. I'm like, I don't care. I'm not going to the nest. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's good. Great. That's good. I, I just wish that everyone else felt that way. About, not just about going to the dentist, but right. about that film and how it is. You know, the, you know who, who doesn't have, you know, some, you know, misgivings, you know, or little, little nerves about going to a dentist. So well, who knows if your your dentist is a psychopath that thinks your teeth are yeah, gross. Yeah, yeah, and most, most people think they're dentists. <laughs> we, we, thought, we, we, we thought we had the formula. I don't care if it is the guy from Major League. I don't want him working on my teeth. He's going to rip my teeth off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 But it was, it was great. He was, he was good in the dentist. It was good. He was good in the dentist. I'll tell you who was in the dentist. My God. And he, he had either a one-liner or he was, I don't know, he must have had a line or two at the most, but he's a major star now, and I can't think of his name. God, you guys got the computers up? Run, yeah, run, I can, I'll can. get it for you right now. Yeah, yeah get that up, man, because you're going to be quite surprised, because I, you know, I, I didn't pay that much attention to, you know, you know I, but I didn't realize that this, until later, I said, oh my God, this, 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 he must have got his spot. In this film, in the dentist, uh, 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 shortly, shortly there, uh, shortly before that, I can't think of his name. Mm. What is it? Mark right? Ruffalo. <laughs> yeah, Mark yeah. Ruffalo's in it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> He's an Avenger. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> He's the Hulk. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I, 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 was, I watched it. I don't know. I don't, I think now I was, he's like an A-list actor, you know. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's crazy. I wonder if someone to see, you'll, you'll speak to me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mark. <laughs> I, mean, I want to be in one of your films, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, but it, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was quite a shock. And I said, oh, wait. Oh, I know. Hey, wait, that's my song. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wow. I might have to actually suck it up and watch the film again so I can, you know, yeah, like, hey, it's Mark Ruffalo. Yeah, I think, I think his, 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 um, his scenes were before the guy's front to go crazy. Yeah. Because he was the first one to go crazy. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yes. Yes. Love yes. that film. Oh man, how can you? That that that's probably the map, the roadmap on how to make a film on a, on a very small budget and do a lot of things with it. It was and good. I think it's still, you know. Yeah, they 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 they. They didn't have a lot of money, but they they certainly had a, they had a large cast, not a lot of money, and uh, they were very inventive. We shot that, God, let's see, we shot that on off of Sunset Boulevard. Oh wow! Uh, and um, Sunset and I'm trying to think of Fair, you know, Fairfax, somewhere around there. Okay. The little, the little, um, I don't know what it is now. But at that point, it had it been an ex-bank or something like that, or a bank business offices on the ground floor, basement floor. And we shot okay. that there. And they, they, they took over that place, and they created that spa. Uh, the swimming pool was somewhere else, uh, another location. But they created the spa and uh, all the uh, the other, almost all the other, uh, uh, I guess all the other scenes were shot in that except for the last scene where we're we're outside and the swimming pool right but everything else was shot right off of sunset boulevard and um, that was that was right after from beyond awesome yeah so yeah. was that a better experience <laughs> yeah. filming for that mm-hmm. i said was that a better experience overall than yeah 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 it was it was yeah, you know, I mean, it, it, you know, it was still, um, I was still dealing with some difficulties. Oh, you know, sure. The, the, the difficulties went on for quite a while, but, mm-hmm. but, uh, I, but still, it was, it was, um, it was enjoyable. I, um, uh, I got along with the actors. Uh, we were, uh, pretty, uh, you know, some pretty good, pretty, we're really, uh, some, some pretty talented people. They just put it on Blu-ray yeah. last year. I picked up a copy of it. Yes, yes. And someone, uh, I think I got a call, but I was out of the country. I got a call. Uh, they wanted me to come down and be part of the Blu-ray, Blu-ray uh, celebration. I guess they were on the premiere or something. Oh, oh wow. wow. And that was um, either two years ago or something like that, but I was out of, out of the country. And I said I could make it. And the the eighth, I'm going to be at the Egyptian Theater because they're going to have the premiere of the Blu-ray uh, DVD for Dawn of the Dead. Awesome! And really? So everybody's coming. Everybody's coming in. From what I understand, Lubinstein and everyone else. You know. Now I've got the they Anchor are, Bay one that they put out like ten years ago. Is it, are they re-releasing it or? Re-release, from what I understand. I'm trying to get some more information now. I, I've been busy with some other projects. That's news to us. We didn't know anything about yeah, it. They had a uh, the the Blu-ray they had about ten years ago is like way out of print. So I guess maybe they're putting it back out. I, I don't. They're, they're having. You know, listen, you don't you don't get you don't you don't rent the Egyptian theater and bring in Rich, Richard Rubenstein unless there's something really big going on. <laughs> sure. It's a it's a, re, it's a reprint. That's awesome. You know, or something, but they're having. A, Celebration, uh, this, you know, doing our best rather, uh, at the Egyptian on the 8th. It'd be exciting. And I'm to be in, well, I'm supposed to be in London uh, the 5th of this month, and I had to cancel that because I have to do this, you know, right. which is, you know, I, I can't, cannot not do this. Sure. So yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, so that's why I'll be in the 8th, so let the fans know, come on down. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. Oh, I was just going to, uh, I guess George and everybody's coming down then. I don't, I, all I know is Rupert's thing right now, and I, I can, I put in a call today, I haven't heard back yet, and uh, I will find out tonight if it's, who else is coming, but I would imagine that if Richard's coming out, that uh, quite a few people involved with the film will be here as well. Awesome. I'm not quite sure if George is going to be here, maybe he has another uh, commitment, and maybe he will be here. I don't know that yet. Of yet. That's really cool. I found out when they invited me, they included in the email that Richard was coming. Awesome. So, I, I, so they didn't say anything about anyone else, but I'm sure that uh, they're reaching out to everyone, and I, 
I wouldn't be surprised if George was there. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And and Mike Gornick, I would hope, and, uh, you know, some of the other other people that were instrumental in, in, in uh, launching and working on Dawn. Tom know, Savini, maybe? Tom. <laughs> Savini, yeah, maybe. Um, uh, certainly the Bubas, maybe. Uh, Pasquale and Tony Bubas. They'll probably come out. Uh, maybe. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't think there's a, you know, I, 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 maybe Scott. I'm, I'm not sure if, uh, well, Scott is out in California here. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, G- Galen and um, David are in um, New York. Oh, okay. So they, I, I don't think that they'll, I, I don't know. Maybe they, maybe they, they can buy the demo, they'll, they'll come to. I'm not sure who, you know, maybe you guys can look it up on the line, online and see what, what, what they're having. Yeah, they, definitely. I'd be Egyptian, and maybe they'll, they'll give you a, a list of who's coming, and you guys can give a shout out. And, yeah. You know, oh, hell yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah. So that that's that's where I'm going to be. I, I I have a um I have two films and a and a TV uh, appearance that are coming out uh, this sure. not this year but next next year. And uh, so I was supposed to be in a festival in in, in uh, the UK with one of them, and I, I had to cancel that. But uh, you know. I'm Right. Look out for that. This, maybe not, 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 I think that it's, it's a relationship film, uh, but I'm not, I'm not the, between this couple and the couple, which I'm not part of the couple. Right. And, <laughs> but I do have a, a significant role, and uh, uh, there's very little um, horror, so I, I would a dash of horse, of silly horror, crazy <laughs> comical horror. Right. Yeah. So, uh, Kurt, uh, Kurt's a bit nice. Look out, look out for it. Look okay, definitely. Yeah, and the Rift is the other one I've got. Um, yeah, I'm looking at that here. Uh, yeah, yeah, the Rift, yeah. Yeah, that that's, uh, has a, a, a very fine cast, you know. I don't know if you know, uh, you know, uh, Mort, Morty? I don't you know. You don't know, you don't know, you don't know. You don't know, and he, he, he got, might, might be just a little... Uh, Pastor, his name is Mon- I'm Monty, 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 not Monty, Monty, Monty Markham. You know Monty Markham? No, not familiar with him. Yeah, Monty Markham. You know the uh, Magnificent Seven? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Well, there was the Magnificent Seven, Magnificent Seven Two. I'm familiar. And I know what that is. That was with George Kennedy was in it, and Monty Markham played. Uh, I think the uh, Steve McQueen character. I do know. Yes, um, okay. I know who he is. Yeah, yeah. Well, he did a lot of television, and uh, and then he he, he was a a a um, uh, uh, he was a documentary. I think he he produced documentaries. He narrated documentaries for the History Channel or the uh, Discovery. Oh, okay. Travel Channel, yeah, and he, he did that for, for for many years. I remember him as a, a voice for, for for many commercials and and uh, documentaries. And he had a, a huge uh, uh, documentary, a very 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 uh, lucrative and and, and, and uh, impressive documentary career. Wow! As well, so he's he's in the rest, and it was it was fun hearing some of the old stories from him. Oh and, yeah. Um, a woman by the name of Katrina Cass. Uh, uh, she's from Slovenia, but she uh, did uh, the um, oh god, uh, what is it called? <laughs> Not the uh, Wall Street, because that's with uh, Charlie Sheen. What's the the other one? Um, oh, uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. Ah, uh, oh, god, 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 god. I know that's gonna drive me nuts uh, now. <laughs> the Wolf of Wall Street was the Wolf of Wall Street. Is that what it is? Wolf of Wall Street, or was it? It's with, um, uh, oh my God. With DiCaprio? DiCaprio, yes. Yes, yes, that, yes um, I know, yeah. Yeah, Wolf of Wall Street. Wolf of Wall Street, yep, yes. Yeah, you got yes, it, that's it. Yes, with, 
And, and she was in also Danny Collins with uh, Pacino. Okay, yep. Yes, yes. So, so we, had a, we had a pretty strong cast. That is a strong uh, cast. For, nice. For the rift, yes. Yes, we had a strong cast for the rift. So, so there's a little bit of uh, 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 Serbian. They, they, they do speak a little bit of Serbian and a little bit of uh, uh, titles there, but not, not much. Not wow. much. And it's an, it's an interesting film. It's a character I've done before, so it's no change in that, but it's uh, done a little better and uh, it's, a, it's a little enjoyable for the launch. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. that's great. Yeah, yeah. It's enjoyable. Uh, go retro on you again. Uh, we'll get yeah, right into uh, <laughs> Leatherface. How did that come about? Oh, yeah. It's a Chainsaw Massacre 3. Yes, oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. What, what would you like to know about Texas Chainsaw Massacre? How did you get involved in that project? You know, I don't quite remember. I think they called me and wanted me. Nice. You know, uh, they called, said, was uh, uh, Skin for you available? Skin available? Yes. Okay. So I, uh, that's how I got involved. Uh, most most people want to know how I lived after, after the chainsaw was put through my head. After having a chainsaw, you know, Kill me in a pool of water. Right. And how do I? And it's absolutely true because I uh, was supposed to die at that point, and we we stopped shooting and the wrapped. And uh, a month later, two months later, I get a call. They say we're gonna we're go back and reshoot. I said we shoot what? They said what you you you're gonna live? I said well how can I live? I just got a chainsaw put through my head. <laughs> you know I don't think I don't think. I don't think I don't think it's a possibility to fool the audience. They're going to take out the part where I get the chainsaw put to my head. You know, that big white thing. You know, if they're going to take that out, then, then maybe I can live. But you know, you're going to have to justify this some way to the audience. Yeah. And he said, No, 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 no. You live. We're going to put a scar. On you. I said, Well, why? Now, I, I, I was told the audience they tested it, and the audience didn't like that I died. Right. And that's why they're going to shoot. And I, you know, I was under that impression for many years. But I heard Jeff Burr, I think it was last year. He's a great guy. We were, in, uh, or the year before, we were in, in a convention together. <laughs> and you know, and Q and A. Right. He said, "No, said, this is what happened, and it was totally different from what I was told." So I don't know why, <laughs> why, what the real reason is that uh, that I lived. But that, that's 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 pretty much the question: Why? Right. How did I survive? With just a little scar on the top of my head, I show up again and say, "It's Benny. It's Benny. I'm okay. You know, you're safe. I've come to save the day. You know, just don't don't get out of the way of bits of metal falling out of my head. But uh, I'm here for you. <laughs> so it was, it, was, it was a good time. It was a good time. It was um, um, Clue Gulliger's wife played one of the parts. Wow. In Texas Chainsaw and Clue Gulliger. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm a little older than you guys, so <laughs> I remember the cowboy movies when they were on every Saturday and they were just sure. on AMC. And, so, and they were black and white. So, and of course, I know them so, from Return of the Living Dead, which yeah. is awesome. Right, 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 right. But he, he was, uh, he was a cowboy. Yeah. He was a cowboy hero. He was a cowboy, uh, he did cowboy films and he was, um, he was, very good, and I always was, you know, a big fan of his as a, as a, as a, as a, when he portrayed a cowboy in film. Sure. And uh, the, so I'm on the set, and then somebody said, "Well, that's cool, cool." And I said, "What?" Said, oh, really? Okay. And then he showed up, and I was just starstruck. Yeah. Because you know, again, this, I'm rarely am I starstruck by anyone, and but for this guy, right. Um, uh, I grew up with him as a young kid, you know, going to going to the neighborhood uh, uh, movie house and, and paying my little little trinkets and going in and spending the day watching cowboy movies and cool 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 was, was part of that. Right, it was, was part of that, you know. So I was uh, very very kind of I didn't, I didn't say a word to him, you know. Start <laughs> 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 look, look, looking at him from a distance, you know. God, that that's him. <laughs> That's the guy who grew up watching. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. It was it was a fun movie. Uh, uh, I, we 
shot it behind Magic Mountain. I don't know. Most, most oh, yeah, I've been to Magic there. Mountain. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah, we shot it right behind it. You know, right? I, 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 there was a gate that separated the uh, um, amusement park and the hills of the Southern California and that those, those desolate hills in the back of it. Right. And we shot at night, and the Rattlers came out at night. Mm. So we were always uh, on the lookout for rattlesnakes crossing onto the set. Damn. And they, they were killing them. They were killing them, up, I would say, one or two a night. Maybe I'm up being a little... It's a horror movie within a horror movie, you know. Oh, yeah, horror, horror. <laughs> You know, I, I started one myself going to the set and, and alerted the Wranglers. Say, hey, oh. guys, we got another one. You know, maybe you might want to come over and get this one, too, right? <laughs> so so that, that was... Um, Ari and I spent from sun down to sun up in that pool of water. Wow. Body. Damn. That, that, that was 20... Uh, that was... But sun up, sun down, how many hours? Like 16 hours, whatever it was. You yep. know, 12 hours, I don't know. I'm not sure. Anyway, so we, we, uh, it was, it was that kind of movie. Just, just a lot of action, adventure, running. Um, of course, it was gory, <laughs> which we all love. Oh, yeah. And, uh, it was, uh, only thing that worried. Oh, I broke Vigo Morganston's, uh, ribs in that, in that film. You did? Oh, my. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How's that I, I, didn't, I didn't find that out until, oh, I think about see, 10 years ago. You know? That's about crazy. 10 years ago. We were both in Spain at, uh, you, do you guys know Sieges? Uh, do you know Sieges? Do you know Sieges? Do you know the festival, the, the city? Yes, 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 um, yes, yes, I yeah. do. Yes. Yes, yes. I read up that about Barcelona. So he was there with history of violence. And uh, I was there with something. I can't think of what the hell I was doing. But he was doing <laughs> history of violence. And uh, I might have, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, was I there for, for some kind of special award or did I have a film? I, I, I don't think I had a film that year. Cause it, it, and, 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 and I might have. I don't quite remember. Anyway, Vigo uh, told me, you know, we, we hung out a little bit. You know, for a couple of hours, you know, three, three, four hours that night. Right. Uh, night of the gala parties and you know, the great parties they have there. And uh, he told me, he said, you know, you broke my rib. I said, what? <laughs> he said, you, bro- you broke my rib. I said, what do you mean I broke your rib? He said, you know, in the final fight scene, I said, you broke my rib. I said, well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't let go. <laughs> <laughs> He's a really strong guy, so I had to, I had to use a little strength to get him off me. I was to separate myself from him, but I didn't know I broke his wrist. So wow. that was, that was news to me, so that's a little trivia for you guys and for the fans, <laughs> you know, that Vigo got his, his wrist broke in, uh, in Texas Chainsaw 3, you know. Because Ken Foray is the Lord of the Ring. <laughs> right. the Lord of the Ribs. <laughs> Oh, I'll put that in the uh, the the promo picture for the for the interview. We'll do the so Lord of the Ribs on it. Lord, Lord of the Ribs. <laughs> I'll tell you. That's right. A fun story about that movie, how special it was to me. My friend that we actually left school, cut school to go watch Leatherface. Yeah, so it's a oh, fun memory wow. for me. It's, it was it was just a lot of fun, and I'll be honest with you, the trailer. If you remember the trailer for it, the Excalibur, the chainsaw coming out of the water, and then Leatherface turning yeah. around, that horrified me to death. <laughs> <laughs> it scared the I shit saw, out of me. <laughs> yeah, I saw them. You know, you're when you're in the set. You're not you're not privy to all the special effects. You know, you come in, you 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 you, you do your you're doing your scene. They bring to bring in the special effects later or before you get there. And this time I was lucky enough to see that and see how that, and they, they had a few, few miscues before they got it right, but they got it right now. I, I was able to see it come out of the water. I thought it was very impressive. There's a oh, it was chainsaw very comes out of the water and it's just running. I said, that's, that's cool. Oh yeah, that, that scared me so bad. <laughs> 
Because you, you don't know what it is. It's like, okay, there's this guy standing looking at the leg. It's like, oh, it's Leatherface. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, we lost, we lost the Leatherface, by the way. We yeah, lost, uh, we lost the Leatherface. Yeah, we lost Gunner. Yeah. The Leatherface. The Leatherface. Oh, yeah. We lost, um, yeah. Um, he's, um, that was, last year, wasn't it? Yep, yeah. Pancreatic last cancer, year. I believe. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. And, uh, I had, I was just in uh, in Eng- in the UK with him. I would say no more than six months before. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. And I didn't spend time talking to him because I was doing my own thing and I had some stuff that I was working on, so I didn't hang- I didn't hang out. And I didn't hang out at night. You know, sure. most of the time you meet at you know you meet at the bar. You are you are you. You you have dinner with people. I had dinner with with some friends and and then uh, went directly to my to my room and and, and worked on worked on a um, a script that I, I, I was working I was writing and and oh, okay. spent um, any time with him and I thought I'd catch up and I'd get in the next day the next day and then all of a sudden it was time to leave and I we didn't spend any time so you know I I, I hadn't talked to him and then I got a. God, did I get it? Uh, I got a, a notice from somebody. I'm trying to think of who it was. Uh, somebody that called and left a message that uh, he he had passed. Right. And uh, uh, and then right. I think his his, uh, his his fiance had uh, sent me uh, an invitation to come up to uh, uh, Maine and uh, uh, to his uh, memorial. But mm-hmm. I, again, I was not. Sorry to hear that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, but uh, that was uh, we lost one. Yeah, we lost uh, the yeah. Leatherface. The Leatherface. And then Angus yeah. from uh, Phantasm as well was uh, huge. Yes, you know. yes, yes. That's right. That's right. Angus Grimm. Yeah. yeah. And he was. Uh, I've, I've appeared with him a few places. Very yeah. nice gentleman. But yeah. I can remember. I can remember him at Chiller. You guys know Chiller, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In the Jersey, yeah, yeah. This is the first uh, first time I met uh, Angus Grimm. They they set up a throne for him. Right. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> a throne. I said, what? Who sets the throne? And why do we have a throne? Right. He looked at, I maybe take notice of this. And uh, it was it was he. It was he, Angus Grimm. And we talked a bit then and introduced myself. And he was a very uh, lovely gentleman. Oh yeah, yeah I, I had went to a Phantasm cast reunion. It was the first convention I ever did, and it was um, it was very surreal. Like meeting him, you know, he was very terrifying in the in the films. Um, but upon meeting him, it was more like I don't know. I just felt really. Uh, I don't know, he's a very peaceful guy, you know. Oh, very peaceful guy. Oh no, no, he he was you know completely different from the character. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah which, 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 you know, I guess uh, you know he. He used some part of his personality, and and, and, and you know, I guess he has to use his craft. I'm sure. Sure. As an actor, he did that, but um, I'm, I, you know, still he was. There was something was, about him when I met scary. him. Like it felt, I felt like he knew me, and he knew, he knew me for a long time. But you know, it was yes. just yes. It got something about yes. him. He was a very, very interesting guy, and you know, he wrote like liner yes. notes for the Beatles, you know, some of the Beatles records and stuff like that. I mean, he mm-hmm. he had a very illustrious career outside of the horror stuff but you know um, he did he did yeah like crazy I he think did. he's a Grammy a Grammy winner and you know all kinds of stuff yeah. so um, yeah. that was, that was he, definitely a loss not only in the horror world but you know just in in general in entertainment business so yes yes <clears throat> I, I know he used to he used to do the Raven for uh, well, on some of his appearances right he would, uh, they, they would have a Q&A and he would just get up and <laughs> <laughs> that's hardcore. And, uh, and that would be it. You know? <laughs> well, we, we don't have any time for Q&A. Well, that's good. You just got a performance. So, and, and the fans love it. <laughs> that is he, cool. He was, he was quite a gentleman. Quite a gentleman. What else about Texas Chainsaw? Anything else about that, that lovely piece of work? Well, I always thought I wanted to ask you about this. I believe if it's been yeah. a minute since I've watched it, but the armadillo getting run over... Do you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. 
always always thought that was just really <laughs> really morbid. I don't know as as like, <laughs> when I first saw it, I was like, wow, that's like. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that yeah. and that was that that was with uh, Bill Butler and Kate Hodge in the car. Yeah. So I, oh, don't, okay. I don't quite. Yeah. So I'm not quite sure if that was a um, you know something that they put together. I don't, I don't think they ran over. Um, no. Um, <laughs> no. It's bad no, luck, no. apparently. I I I bad luck, and I think think somebody would have you know we would have heard something from someone at that point you know why are you killing animals you know right. so so you know not for that <laughs> that was pretty they had some pretty gruesome things in there I, you know I, I think the first one was um, was the uh, I think the one I saw I didn't see the I didn't see the one that Bill mostly was in number two yeah I didn't right. see that you know but I did I, I did see the first one and uh, I said okay and this is a true story great who are we living with out here? You know. Oh yeah, right, definitely. Were you? you know? I wanted to ask you something just in general. Did yeah. were have we? Were you ever offered a role from maybe another uh, horror director that you maybe wish you had maybe done or not? Or was there anything interesting like that that you were ever offered? Maybe it just was a scheduling thing where you weren't able to work with them and you wish you could have. Or you know, I tell you, not horror. Not horror. Okay. But I I have... Oh, God. I'll, I'll tell you a little story because I, I, could, I, could, I could tell you about three or four, five, six, seven, eight things in you know, <laughs> different roles sure. that, that, that either I was, you know, that either I got and they replaced me because I didn't have the biggest name sure. or that I was the first, or the first in line and it was between me and another guy. <laughs> Anything you want to tell us, we would love to hear it. Stuff forever, you know, and major films, major films. But I, I, I think that um, this, this, this was a, a real, really a good one. I just finished uh, Oh Bingo Long and Jack and probably Dawn of the Dead. I'm not quite. This is 19. No, no, I'm sorry. 76. Okay. This is 76. The bicentennial year. Right. 1976. And I finished up, uh, I worked on Bing Along and, and Coast Deck, as I said. And um, um, I got a call from um, a gentleman, and he said, uh, we'd like you to come to the United Artists building, and we'd like to interview for a film. Right. And I said, okay. And that was on 7th Avenue, I think, or 7th Avenue, about 46th Street, 47th Street, somewhere around there at that point right. in New York. And um, so I went around uh, to this um, office and uh, it was a producer and uh, I'm trying to think of his name, Chris uh, Kirshner. I think it's Kirshner. Right. And I can't think of, think of his first name. I think that was the name. But anyway, he, he did a lot of work as well. And uh, I met um uh, but a, a man by the name of Chris Mankiewicz and, and Anna Navarro was his assistant. Okay. Right. And they were just okay. running offices or, or, or boring offices at this, uh, this producer's uh, 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 set of offices in, in, in the United Artists Building. Sure. And uh, they told me that they were looking at me to play Chris Posadix the first man killed in the American Revolutionary War. Okay. Wow. And that, and that, uh, Christmas Addison was a mulatto. He was mixed, mixed race, but black. Right. And that, uh, he was a, uh, uh, a seaman. And that, uh, he was the first man killed in the American, American Revolutionary War. That, uh, they were looking at me and Dick Anthony Williams on the West Coast. Mm-hmm. And that they mm-hmm. they were kind of settled that they wanted me, and they wanted to see some work out. Now at that time I was in an acting class in uh, Lower Manhattan on uh, the right. uh, 14th Street, 15th, 15th Street, 15th, 16th Street, Michael Stroman's performing gallery, and I was doing a scene from um, Oh God, what what it was what what's the um, uh, with James, uh, James Earl Jones, but uh, it was uh, the, about the boxer Jack Johnson. I can't think of the Great White Hope. Yeah. I do the scene from the Great White Hope. Okay. 
And I said, well, come down. And I'm doing a scene tomorrow night. And I think class, you can see me there. So they came down, they saw me do the scene, and they said, and they, after the scene, they, they motioned for me to come out and they left. They told me, come meet us at the office tomorrow at, at, at uh, 8 p.m., 8 a.m. I said, okay, I'll see you there. So I went up, and, you know, they, I got there about 8, and no one was there. I said, okay, right. this, is, this, is not, this is not going well. Okay. So they showed up about 9, and uh, they said, hey, okay, Ken. And they brought in all of these people from Jamaica who were, uh, 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 you know, working on finding the set, you know, finding the set, set location sets and that kind of thing. They were going to shoot. The story of the American Revolution with Christmas Addicts, I'm going to play Addicts, Trevor Howard and John Gilgood were going to be my co-stars. Right. We were going to shoot it in England, Jamaica, <clears throat> and Boston. Uh, it was going to come out for the bicentennial, okay, for the next, uh, 1976, right. and that it would be all over the country and I would be a major star. Oh, wow. And I met all of the the, the, the from Jamaica, who, who were you know working on locations in Jamaica, I they I stayed in their offices and we talked about the character, what it was doing, what it was, all of this, and I I left there feeling like uh, my my feet weren't touching the ground. I said, oh boy, this right. is great, absolutely wonderful. Well, John Gilbert, are you kidding me? Trevor Howard, mm. like you can't ask for anything better than that. <laughs> I said, great, this is gonna be wonderful. I play Christmas addict. And, that, and, that, and I'll segue into something else with them about addicts uh, as well. I, I so, uh, so, you know, how about if they said, uh, we got to do something with the financing and we'll get back to you in two weeks. And you come in for a screen test and we we, we, we feel pretty certain that you're the person we want. I said, okay, you know. Well, I didn't hear from them for two weeks. I said, well, what's yeah. going on? And finally, the third week, and I went back up to the office and they were no longer there, of course. And I found out that this is Joseph Mankiewicz's son. Yeah. The, the, the one with all the Academy Awards. Yeah. Joseph Mankiewicz. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. So he, um, they, they, apparently they, 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 they um, went back to, to Los Angeles. And eventually I did hear from them. And they said at, at, during that year, there was a tax change in the country. Ma a massive tax change. I forget what it was so many years ago, but I forget what exactly happened, but a lot of films lost their financing because of it. Wow. And this was, and this was one of them. So a movie them. about the American Revolution that you're going to be yes. in was, uh, you said it was a tax thing, right? Yeah, yeah. That's kind of ironic, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> the taxes ruined it again. <laughs> Absolutely. So they got us again, the damn British. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, it went down the tube, you know, wow. it went down the tube. And that was, you know, at least I don't know what what would have happened, but it so they said they were pretty sure that you were their guy. Did you know for sure that you were going to be the guy at that point, or? I Oh man! And that they're only looking at two people, ah. and that uh, they pretty much, uh, they pretty much assured me, that, but without saying that 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 that, that, that you know, I think it it, it, it really was going to depend on my screen test. They didn't want to let to get to your head if they were certain. Yeah. So if I if I got past the screen test and it, and, I, and, it, and it came out. As well as they, as, as I would like, and they would like, and then then I, it was it was a pretty lot uh, done deal, you know. So right. you know, and so that was you know, Trevor Howard, John Gilgood, Ken Foley playing, right. Chris Pathetic, <laughs> you know. So that was one. So that you know, and there've been others, you know. Like I could name, I could name at least four or five others that were you know, major major films uh, that were produced. And I either uh, was cast and then not cast, right. or was um, or what, what if, uh, or they uh, said I was I, you know if they didn't get a name I'd be I, I'm the guy. 
Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, we got a name. <laughs> we got a name. You know, and, and it's happened many times. It happens, it's happened, you know, more than more times than I'd like. You know, certainly. But that that one about with the, with the Chris Fatic thing was really sure. Really, sure, really sure. gives you an idea of how things can can look so wonderful and like they're going to work out for you within you know and within a week's time a few weeks time it all collapses and folds that's no, wild we've all, we've all gone through it you know oh yeah we've all been through it. I had a um, um, I had a film that uh, there's a documentary on a film on a uh, high school in Indianapolis Indiana called Christmas Attics High School sure Attics, yeah. <laughs> Christmas Attics okay Okay. And this high school was where my parents and my brothers and and um, aunts and uncles all went to this high school. And um, this uh, it's a very famous high school. I mean, Oscar Robertson came out of there. Harley Bryan, a lot of NBA players, a lot of generals, a lot of doctors, lawyers. Nice. Just a accomplished, accomplished, very accomplished uh, group of people have come out of this through the decades and. Um, uh, so Spike Lee did a, a documentary uh, on Oscar Robertson and including the high school. I think it wasn't that long of a documentary. I'm not sure if it was right. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that. And that was last year, the year before. Oh, okay. And, and Ted Green just released his, which is a 90-minute documentary. It's only playing at PBS in Indiana, and it just uh, had its premiere the other night. Okay. Uh, the last week. Last week. And uh, I wrote a six-hour uh, series uh, on the same subject before Ted and before uh, Spike right. did that. I haven't got my produce. I can't do it. I have <laughs> that, muck that off. Okay? Yeah. But, uh, but uh, I wrote a six-hour uh, series on the same sub- subject, and uh, uh, it's uh, been well-received.
Yeah. You know, uh, for people who, who read it in the last few years, two, two or three years. So, so it's, it's, a, it's a fine piece of work. Uh, the documentary is out there, so I, I would hope that people would, would keep their eye out for the documentary by Ted Green. Yeah, I'll and check it out. We'll, I, we'll I, check I it out. I think it's going to go naturally. Look it up on look it up for PBS stations in the Midwest. That's being Indiana. And what's it and, called, uh, the, the it, series? It's, it's called um, uh, Chris, the, the School that, that Changed the... Uh, oh, God, I'd have to look it up. Huh? I don't <laughs> have it. It's the, the School that Changed... Hey, you guys, hold on. Talk to me while I look this up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ted Green. I'll find out what it's, what it's, what it's got. What it's got there. Hold on. Well, yeah, definitely sounds interesting. While I'm looking at this. Yeah, it sounds cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I think, uh, well, it's a very, very interesting subject. You know, Indiana was the, the head of the, um, uh, the, Ku Klux Klan for, for many years. I mean, it was the headquarters. Wow. So it has a lot of history, a lot of history. Uh, every time they, they do something on hate groups and the Klan, they always, you know, they'll talk about the Klan where it started and, right. you know, and, and Tennessee and, and, you know, and the hate groups that are surrounding them and, and, and involved sure. with them and the, you know, Nazi groups and that kind of stuff. And then right. they're always, you know, if you watch the History Channel, they always go specifically to Indiana. <laughs> yeah. Well, I live, I'm <laughs> from, uh... You know that story, you know? <laughs> yes, yes, it's, um, it's, uh, Indiana had, I think the, it was, uh, said that the, every third white male, it was a Klan member in the state. Oh, man. You know, so it, 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 they, they took to the Klan like ducks to water for some reason <laughs> that state. It's not like... They were in New York too, because well, I'm, I'm from Long Island originally, and yeah, and, and uh, they had the Klan up there. I saw an actual rally driving around Long Island before, you know, when I was younger. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. They scared the shit out of me too. I was like, "Mom, who's that?" And she was like, "Ah, they're they're a bunch of assholes." I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> I guess I'll have to ask, ask you that question when I'm a little older. <laughs> You know, it, 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 uh, I lived in New York mm. for 11 years. So, yeah, it, it was not, uh, you know, it definitely, um, um, I had, you know, I mean, like all of America, we're going through a very difficult time now. It's, oh, sure. Uh, oh, God, it's, it's just so... I don't know what the hell is going on now. It's, um, it, it's, it's frightening. It's crazy, absolutely <laughs> crazy. And I'm finding that people don't really care about the truth anymore. You know, it's just like, you know, we're having people get... People are killing and maiming each other. And yeah, it's out of hand. It's anywhere. You know, it's not just, you know, you should be as, as an African American, I can say, you know, that, that, you know, Black Lives Matter and that it happens, happening with that and with the African Americans. But sure. it's it just the attitude of, of our country about almost everything. Yeah, you people know? neglect uh, you know, you how people feel, anymore. you know. Yeah, yeah, you don't get good service anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> People realize it's crazy, but they don't at the same time. It's kind of like they don't, they, you know, they don't. They don't seem to have the compassion. If they really think about it. It's only it's only <laughs> been like forty years, you know, since um, yeah. African Americans you know. have had full rights and everything. No one really takes that into account. That it's only been that long. That's not a lot of time. You know, let, let, at let all. Let me tell you something else, too. That, that it's, uh, you know, I, my father fought the Japanese. Mm -hmm. And that was in his lifetime as a young man. Yeah. Same time, Hitler was, 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 was killing uh, um, uh, the handicapped and the disabled. Yeah. You know, uh, 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 injecting them with poisons and killing them. And then, then he, he took on that, that, kind of, that kind of behavior into the concentration camp. Yeah, so this oh yeah. Is just my father's generation. This is not that, that long ago. Yeah, my it's grandparents not, fled <coughs> um, from Germany right before that and, and came to the U.S. and, you know, helped, helped create me eventually, you know, through my dad. So that's cool. Um, yeah, 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 but they, they got out of there. Yeah, they, they fled right before that happened. You know, they, but, man, they knew, they they knew what was brewing and they left. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So many didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you're very fortunate. You're very fortunate. Your oh, yeah. grandfather, you said? 
Yeah, and my grandma, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank God for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you, should, you, should, you, should, you should say a lot of prayers for them because they... They sent me, they sent me, they sent your, your, your and my family. mom grew up in '52. You know, she was born in '52, so she saw a lot of, a lot of shit too. You know, um, yeah, had me, that had me very New York? Yeah, oh yeah, she grew up in uh, yeah. Port Washington, and uh, oh, Port Washington. Oh yeah, so I was in Bankman. Yeah, and she went to uh, she went to Columbia, <laughs> Columbia University, and she sure. was RN sure. for 38 sure. years. You know. Yeah, I have. I live right down the hill from Columbia University. Awesome. And, uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I spent 11 years in New York, as I said, and I became a New Yorker. Oh, yeah. Oh, are, you, are you from New York originally? I am. I was born in Ice Slip. Did you know Jackson Hole? Did, did, you know Jackson Hall? did I what? Do you know Jackson Hole? Uh, Jackson I don't believe Hall, so. Jackson Hole Brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah.
there. You know what I mean? You get a slice in the village, you can get a slice on the west side, up the west side, it's the same slice. Oh, that's great. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> they don't vary very much, you know what I mean? It's all great, it's the same slice, but if you found something that was extraordinary, that's the that's truly dark. Oh, it is. It's called La Scala's. I don't know if it's still there. I haven't been there since I was a kid, but... I mean, <coughs> Italian food, their calzones were out of this oh, world. It, and the stop pizza it, was, it, like, I'm I making you hungry. Don't, 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 don't listen to Italian food to me. I can't eat it anymore. I love Italian food. I love it. We'll get back to the, to the film. Anymore. Thing. You know? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Oh, oh, oh come on, wait, man. I just want some only just put it in my mouth to eat it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the cream. I <laughs> die. Oh yeah, oh, I just ate and I'm getting hungry. Oh, are you kidding? <laughs> I put out the iPhone. You know, I'm, I'm gonna put on a diet. They want me to lose weight, so I'm sure. I'm gonna put on a diet. They want me to lose weight, so sure. I can't eat any Italian food. Ah. I can't eat anything. You know, once they put you on these diets, you know, you can't eat anything. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> and then we got this, and that, and once you, once you, you put it together, you say, well, "This isn't tasty." Yeah. pretty good at digging up stuff. I think I can find it. If we do, we'll... Yeah, look for the Indianapolis Recorder. And we'll, and we'll plug that, it. That might, that might bring it up, too. Indianapolis Recorder. Okay. And that, that might uh, bring, bring it up, but it is... Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, this is just a few years ago. I, I, can't, I can't remember the title, and I don't know. I feel so embarrassed. They're gonna, they're, they're gonna no, that's up. fine. Listen, yeah. they're gonna, they're gonna Is there anywhere that that series is? Uh. <laughs> is there anywhere people can view your uh, six-hour series? <laughs> you maybe publish it, you know. be the I guy to do it. I got a schooler, I got a schooler, I got an island. Right, <laughs> I got, yeah. I got two different camps and then people and babies. <laughs> it's incredible. It's really the, the army comes to save everybody. It's that place. Awesome. You know, you're at, uh, I, think, I think I was given a quote from some, of, some people in Europe, uh, some financiers in Europe, so they could do it for about five over there. Right. <laughs> There you go. I said, yeah, right, right. In your dreams. In your dreams. I think that would be cool if, if you know, that, that got the green light. Oh, it's, it's, a good, it's, it's a good one, too. But, 
God, we're in need of a good another good zombie film. I don't think uh, you know. There's a lot. It's been kind of oversaturated. You know, The Walking Dead's a big thing, so zombies are kind of more popular. You know now, but oh, they're crazy. I'm not sure where it's going. Okay, I'm not sure if it's going to saturate itself out and we're going to have to oversaturate it. It's been oversaturated or not at, at this point with The Walking Dead and with all the people who've been making zombie movies for the last 20 years. Yeah, I still think the the George ones are really it, and maybe you know. I, I like some of the Italian stuff, uh, also the old, yeah. the old I stuff. Like the, I like the remake of Dawn. I, I like, I like. But you yeah, know, talk I about your like uh, your cameo movie. in in the remake of Dawn of the Dead. How are yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, that that was that was that, that was that was excellent listening. How pretty I was in that. Thank you very much. Right. I mean, I was weighing about three fifty then. Thanks. That was really. I was, no, I thought it was cool I, that you I were. Feel, you know. I feel, I feel the screen. You know what I mean? I think this is a thing alone. You know. <laughs> And now there's zombie walks, like and people do all happened. kinds of crazy stuff. Huh? There's okay. like things that cities do now called zombie walks, you know, around Halloween. Oh, they've been going up for a long time. I mean, this is, they've been living all over the place. Yeah, That's it's crazy. They've been doing that for, for 20 years now. Yeah. But I'm, I'm saying that the, the, you know, just in the mainstream, the mainstream uh, media that you have um, uh, commercials with a zombie in it uh, are... Somebody come on, you feeling dead? Tired today, Dad? Or you fall down as a zombie? Yeah. You know, the commercial for, 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 uh, you know, uh, lighter shoes or something. I don't know. Right. You know, and it seems that there's a, a reference to zombies. Like there's uh, someone playing a zombie character. And things that are totally unrelated to, to any zombie. And unrelated to what, what the, unrelated to the zombie. You know, they, 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 they could be with a soap opera on or, or 60 Minutes could be running in a zombie. Yeah, it's interesting now. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Oh no, I was just saying it's interesting how now it's more of a pop culture thing than it was a cult thing. You know, it used to be more of a, a cult exactly. thing for horror fans. Now it's just like, yeah, zombies. You know, and uh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. But we were having a discussion uh, about six months ago with with people who wanted to launch something, and it was it was the EDM music, you know, that kind of thing. Right. And, um, they were talking, they said, you know, the zombies, you know, they're, they're, they're almost, they're, you know, the housewives who never, would never watch a, a, a horror film. Right. Kind of screamish about it, wouldn't, didn't want to see them, as, you know, the, the, you know, the, 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 the real house is really um, uh, watching, you know, uh, uh, the Housewives, uh, the, uh, the, 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 what is it, the, uh, the, the talk, the view, the view. Yeah, the view. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, so, you know that, that's where they, 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 they real, you know, their interests lie, you know, <laughs> and all of a sudden they're now, hey, I'm a fan of zombies. <laughs> I watch the one in there. I'm a big fan. <laughs> you know, because it's just, it's just, it's just it, you know, with the walking dead, and, and I think, you know, even before the walking dead, there was this, you know, reference to zombies constantly in either in uh, written page or uh, type or in in some kind of commercial being shot, right. advertisement or, or or reference by announcer. Right. Oh, you're gonna make me a zombie now? Oh, <laughs> you know, I mean, you're a football game, <laughs> Monday night Monday night football. Is it? Hey, well, you don't fall, you don't fall. You might come become a zombie. All right. <laughs> you didn't hear this 20 years ago, 30 years ago, <laughs> but you hear it now and you hear it everywhere. You know, with the love. If I don't know if it's going to saturate or not. I don't, I don't know where, you know, it takes a better mind than mine to, 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 to figure it out, but it, it's, uh, it's out there. It certainly is out there. You know? Now, was there a zombie yeah. craze, like, after Dawn of the Dead came out? Uh, did you notice any kind of resurgence well, of the, the zombies and the... You know, I, not, not really. I, I, 
you know, there wasn't anything that I noticed. I, you know, George came out with um, uh, Day of the Dead. Yeah. Right after. And, and so I was very excited about that for them. I thought it was going to be a big hit. Right. And, uh, uh, but I, I didn't see, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't, it wasn't any zombie craze really. And as a matter of fact, when we, when, we, when Dawn opened, we took a lot of heat. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. took a lot of heat for that. I mean, we got good reviews, but we took a lot of heat from a lot of people. I mean, I lost a lot of friends. Wow. Of people that I thought were friends. Yeah. And right. uh, people were actors and stuff. And they said, you were in that film. <laughs> and, uh, you know, people people were not, you know, there was, there was I, there were fans there. People, I mean, and Richard Rubenstein did such an excellent job at the executive producer right. in getting it everywhere. I mean, that, that film played in every theater that you could imagine. In Manhattan, yeah. it played at the embassy on First Avenue, the Twin Embassy Theater. This is, these are, these That's are, a big deal. This is the East Side. This is the East Side. And you know the embassy, 63rd, 62nd Street, 60, no, 50, I'm sorry, 59th, 60th Street, mm. First Avenue. The theater played at the Winter Garden on uh, Broadway and 50th, 50th Street, around that area, you know? And so that, that, he didn't play on 42nd Street. <laughs> this is a mixture of upscale movie houses. And that's where it opened in New York. And it opened across the country just that way. And, and in drivers, everywhere. I'll tell you a quick, real quick story. I was, uh, I came out, uh, right after dawn, uh, Scott Reinecker came out here. Yeah. And, uh, I followed behind him about six months later. And Scott, had gotten a job with the limousine company. Wow. And uh, when I got out, we talked, and he said, hey, I, you know, I'm driving limousine. Why don't you come up drive, drive limousine to something <laughs> great? So I said, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I needed some, some cash. I'd just gotten here, you know. I didn't have very much cash. So I asked him, you know, I said, okay. So, you know, so Scotty started to uh, dispatch us a small company. We had three of I think they had four limos in the company, so it was sure. small. And Scott was driving one, I was driving one, and that's two. <laughs> and Scott was also uh, doing this, this dispatching, you know, he was dispatching for a while. Right. And so Scott called me and said, I've got a, got a uh, trip for you, you got to pick him up at the airport. And I said, um, okay, you know, and, and I said, who's the guy I'm picking up? And he said, oh, God, hold it, hold it. Uh, uh, all that jazz, which <laughs> was all that jazz. You remember the phone film, all that jazz? Yeah, right. Yeah, do you remember who it was about? The choreographer? Uh. Oh, look it up, go ahead, look it up. <laughs> choreographer. Yes, it was his life story. All that jazz. Wait a minute, I th- why do I say, I know this is probably wrong, Neil Diamond? Who? That's not it. <laughs> I just oh, that's that. no, it was, um, must have been, it must have come out in 79, 78, no, 70, 79 to 80, somewhere around there, all that jazz. Uh, Roy, Roy Scheider played, played the, uh, was the lead. Oh, okay. I've seen that movie, hold on, I'm looking it up. Yeah, yeah. Bob All that Fawcett. jazz. Bob Fawcett. <laughs> you got Bob Fawcett there? Um, uh, yes. Yeah, okay. I go to LAX to pick up this passenger, and they say you're going to be with him all night. I, you know, that, that's what Scott told me. I said, okay. That's good. So I, I picked up, and so I'm... I'm I get going to the terminal. I got my suit on in time, and I hear this this this, this shouting, Ken Foley, Ken Foley! <laughs> oh my God! Oh Lord Grace! Oh man! I saw you in Westchester County in, in, in New York at the drive-in with my girlfriend. You're phenomenal! I can't have your autograph. You can be doctor. And he said, he said. What are you doing here? I said, I'm um, <laughs> picking you up. He said, what? I said, I'm picking you up. You're picking me up? What are we, you're driving? I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. So that night, I, I spent the evening with Daniel Meldick, who was a producer at uh, but Sony now, and was at that time, I don't think it was Sony, I think it was something. Anyway, he was a producer, his producer, and 
to the theater with her premiere in it. I sat and watched it. And then when it was over, I went and got the car and drove. And uh, he had his, you know, they both had uh, a, um, a lovely, lovely day with him. And uh, <laughs> I said, uh, so we're driving back. And he said, Ken, how does it feel to, to, to create a performance like that and to be driving a limousine? <laughs> and I looked back at him and I said, Pretty damn shitty, Bob. <laughs> Pretty damn shitty, if you want to know. <laughs> that, was awesome. so that, that shows you just how popular it was and the audience it had. And what Rick Rubenstein, what Richard Rubenstein did, he really put this thing in. I went to Indianapolis from New York. I left it coming to California. I went to Indianapolis, uh, got my uncle's car, and did uh, uh, some work on that, and had some work on it, and, and, and drove it out to California. But before I left Indianapolis, it was showing in every drive in there. I was on television. I had to do interviews for PBS. I had to do interviews for, for local television. I had to go to the drive in three or four times while I was there. My <laughs> family members called, for two or three calls, the family members, ah, daddy! <laughs> Yeah, right. So this, this thing got distribution that was, was on her. And we got coverage. We had the major, we had the retreat of God. What was the woman's name? God. There was Cisco Hebert, and I forget the woman's name. I can't think of her name. She's a major reviewer. See, on television, the Cisco Hebert had their show. This woman had her show. I, I hope she forgets me. I can't think of her name. Right. And Rick Reed had his show. And they were all, you know, Which is rare for show. horror for them. Yeah, they, 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 yeah. And, uh, um, and so, 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 so Richard Rubenstein, he, 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 he nurtured this. He, he, he guided this, this, this effort. And, and, and it, was, it was really a great job of producing and executive producing to get sure. it out there. And he did a, he did a wonderful job. I, I got to hand it to him. He was superb at, at, at getting this thing uh, uh, distributed. So he and Salah have to Right. And they, they did a wonderful job, so that's why, you know, I, I you know, I, I think that's why it's, it's, it's had such a, a, a long history in terms of, uh, you know, the, I, 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 it's been compared to, uh, Star Wars and, 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 and Hot Orange and other films that, oh, yeah. you know, I would think, yeah, you know, I said, wait a minute, you know, you know, we're reaching a little high here, aren't we? But <laughs> no, it, you know, that some, some magazines is rated higher. I'd, I'd fully agree with that. I mean, if you look at the horror genre and, and, and stuff like that and where it stands with, um, you know, uh, big budget action movies or sci-fi or any of that stuff or drama or whatever, Dawn of the Dead is like at the the, the forefront of, of, of horror, period. So it's not only a horror classic, it's like a... That's like a must-own movie, period. Like, even if you're not into horror movies or whatever, it's like, oh, yeah, I know Dawn of the Dead, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and it's crazy, people. but when you watch the film, it definitely proves all of that. Like, when you watch it, it's just a great film. Like, it's really just... It's just great. Oh, it's, oh, it is. And, and, and it has a fan base that is um, you know, multi-generational, as I mentioned before, but you don't know who... 
Right. Because you, 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 you have people who, you know, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt if, 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 if I lived from the former chair, chair of Disney, wasn't a fan. Right. You know, I've run, run, run into people like Spielberg who are fans. And Bob Iger, um, yeah, yeah. You know, there are people that seem to get like Barack might be a fan. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I've seen Dawn of the like, Dead. I mean, I mean, it really, it really did that. I'm always surprised as people who are fans who you not necessarily would think are, would be fans of, 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 of your film, you know, of this right. film. And they are, they are. And, and, and it's, you know, I was standing at the, um, I was standing in the hallway waiting for the start of the remake premiere of Dawn of the Dead. Which was, a, uh, you know, it was a good, it's, it's actually a good remake film remake, also. Yeah. And uh, somebody said, hey, Ken, Said what? You know what I said? Say we have what's up? That's Christina Aguilera. She's a fan. <laughs> that's why. That's why she's standing next to you. Oh, what? What? <laughs> yeah, yes. what? Christina Aguilera watching Donald the Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? You know, so. Oh, funny. I mean, it, it, it really is. You know, it, it, I think it's. I think the film. We got guys. We got very lucky. It touched. It touched. It touched a lot of people. You have to you have to go back to Night of the Living Dead, Dwayne Jones, George Romero, sure. and how they put that together. Oh, and that amazing. was that was the key. That was the key. And after that, we just happened to come along at the right time, and it was in color. And you know, yep. malls were not a big part of American society, but they were becoming that. Yeah. And yep. they wanted many of them as they are now. They wanted as commonplace as they are now. Yeah. <laughs> Stands the test of time. It just sits in that, that special place, you know. And it's, I, you know. It immortalizes you as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, it does. I guess. You know, and, and, and listen, I was just a working actor, and I'm, I'll always be just a working actor. But nonetheless, it um, it's a it it it, it sometimes yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize. Here's another poster. I didn't realize how important it was. And I lived. Oh, it's a huge! It's huge. Oh, I think I, I didn't have to. Get it's it. huge. It's, hu- it's, it's huge. George, it's huge. It's huge. Just like that. Never until people, you know, you know, especially African American people, go say, "Oh, you know, you made it." <laughs> oh, it's huge. It's <laughs> great. You know, that movie, you know, the first ten minutes, five minutes. I said, "Yeah, okay." <laughs> and you know, after you know, after. I mean, I, I didn't pay that much attention to it. Right. But, you know, as the years have gone on, the decades have gone I said, this is really important. It was really important to a great many people. Oh, it's, hu- and, it's huge, I think. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. It is. You know, poor, you know, poor me with, with one light out upstairs. I think I didn't get it, but it took a while anyway. Right. But I, I, I didn't... It's I didn't, George didn't, making you know, a I statement. I was happy that I did live. I thought it was a better... I thought it was better for the film that I lived. Right. You know, it was a better story that I lived, but uh, uh, I didn't. I didn't put the two together that being African American and living through to the end and not dying <laughs> was so important to everybody. You know, Dwayne Jones who did the uh, the Night of Living Dead. God, that was that was tragic. Because <laughs> it's like, oh man, they thought yeah, he was a zombie. Exactly. It sucks. Exactly. exactly, exactly. You know, it's like, oh God. See, when I watched Dawn for the first time, I wasn't sure. I was just like, I don't know. I, I like him. I hope he doesn't die, but I'm not sure. You know, you can never tell in this kind of setting where it's like, I, I thought everyone was going to die, you know? Well, you know, when the sun came up, and, you know, you saw the, the, the troopers coming in and the sheriff coming in and all that, you know, these guys walking towards the house, you said, okay, he's going to make it. Yeah. You know, it was the damn dog. <laughs> Living Dead, and it was, you know, I, I guess it, it uh, 
was an, uh, it made a big enough impression uh, around the world because I saw it, and I knew Dwayne before. Wow, okay. Before he did it. So, so wow. I, 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 I saw it, and I was a fan of it. You know, little black and white film, low budget, didn't cost anything, uh, uh, very little, and, 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 and you know, shoestring budget, and, and, and really, you know, but there was a story there, and it was interesting, and it was, it was, it was, it was scary, it was great. And I really, I really liked it, and, 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 and I think that uh, most of uh, most of the world felt the way I did, and that I guess that helped um, launch Dawn, you know, which I was a part of. And oh yeah. Then, and to this day, I'm, I'm, I'm um, glad I was, glad I was, and I feel, I feel uh, again just, just very honored, just very honored that people. Um, appreciate me and appreciate my efforts and, and appreciate the film. Do you think... I, 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 oh, I'm sorry. I, I wanted to ask you. Do you no, please, 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 please. Do, do you think... Because I always felt this growing up. I saw that film for the first time when I was probably... Probably about six or seven, but then I saw it again when I was older and I took a different take on it. I wanted to ask you. I felt like you surviving was George making a really big statement. I thought, I thought it was beautiful. I really did to this day because I can't think of anything. It was just really cool, you know. It was like the, uh, it was just neat. I don't know. I thought it was awesome. And and to me, every time I would watch it over, it's like, yeah, I mean, watch watch Ken whip ass through this whole fucker. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I uh, I you know we, it, it, you know, I hate to, you can be part of a project. And, you know, some people have different opinions about why certain things were done. You know, as I mentioned about Texas Chainsaw 3. And right, what right. I did that, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I kind of hesitate to say why, because I thought it was my, under, I was under the impression that George and I discussed it, and I, I, I almost vividly remember this, that we discussed it, and said, what ending should we go for? And it was kind of like, you know, okay, let's go for the, the, the happier ending where I don't kill myself, you know. And mm-hmm. I think that was George's decision. I think he included me in the in on the discussion. Oh, wow. You know? But I think that was George's decision, certainly. And, um, um, you know, you know I, 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 I think it was the right decision for the film. Sure. Uh, originally, Galen was supposed to move their head in the uh, chopper blades. Oh wow! Mm. I was supposed to commit suicide. Oh and shit! I, and, and, but what I understand, uh, uh, they, they they did a test shooting of uh, ripping Galen's head up to the blades and having to cut off. You know, with a with a dummy. Right. So so they did that, and uh, but nothing was done. Like we didn't shoot me. You know. But again, if George, <laughs> we did. We did. Right. <laughs> and I'm gonna leave it at that. See, I never, I, I never knew that. Yeah, but well, don't, don't quote me. <laughs> oh no, 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 no! Of course. I be the truth. No. I, I could be dead wrong. I could be wrong. George could have thought of that by himself and just mentioned it to me, and I thought we discussed it. <laughs> right. You know, it, it's been a long time, guys. It's a long time ago. That's interesting. You know, I think. And, and I was, uh, you know, I've been through a lot since then. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you mind touching? I wanted to ask you uh, yeah. h- how you met and how you were approached uh, by Rob Zombie to be in Devil's Rejects. Oh God, God, that is the story. Oh, cool. I, uh, I, I, uh, I got the script, and it said Devil's Rejects, and, and I don't know when I got the script, <laughs> but when I read. When I read the name Rob Zombie, Rob, forgive me, forgive me, because I I truly think he's a, a, a very talented, talented director, a very talented individual, and someone I like very much. 
Sure. Right. Uh, I, um, but I saw the name Rob Zombie, and I wasn't familiar with Rob Zombie. I thought this was some crazy fan that put Zombie at the end of his name and was sending me a script. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm, if, if, I'm, if I'm nothing else, I try to be truthful when I can. Oh, sure. I so, appreciate it. So, so I, um, my agent called uh, weeks, two weeks later. He said, did you read that script? I said, what script are you talking about? What script is this now? He said, the one from Rob Zombie. <laughs> I, said, is it, I said, is this real? He said, yeah, read it. They want to meet you. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> so I read the script. I said, oh. I said, Rob Zombie, all right. So I didn't find out that he, you know, I didn't know anything about, uh, you know, I'm a Motown guy, you know. So right, I, yeah. I, so I, so I'm not, you know, I, I, but I'm not limited. Like many of my friends who are either into rap, Motown, the heavy metal, uh, uh, That's what we're into. Sure. Uh, they don't. They don't venture anywhere else, and, I, and I'm, I'm not that way. It's good. I love it. I love Sinatra. Sure. I love Sammy Oh, Davis. I love Sinatra. I love, uh, I love Tony Bennett. Yeah. Oh know, yeah. I, I, I love some of the old. You know, I love. Uh, I like. I love Cole Porter. Yeah. Uh, I love. I love all kind. I love. I love. I love classical as well and country and blues. So I, you know, I try to like. I, I love volunteers. I like. I like. I like. I like music. And so, but but I never. You know, I, I knew some heavy metal, I knew some uh, rock, you know, but not, not a lot of it, but some what's of some the, of the What's some of the heavy metal? Oh, God, I don't remember, but if you, if you, if you listen to your books, I'll tell you about, if I heard that song. You know, I, I don't remember, but I heard some of it, but I don't remember what it was. Sure. But I remember Either way, that's yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, cool. Yes, yes, but I, but I, but I, but I like so. I, I, but I wasn't familiar with Rob Zombie and White Zombie. Right. You know, I did. I, I, I wasn't that much into metal that I, you know, that I, 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 or, 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 or rock that I could, you know, that that, that I could uh, that I knew anything about, about Rob Zombie and those guys. Sure. I, you know, I, I did the Ramones first uh, uh, MTV video, the first video for MTV. Yeah, New York Boys. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. He just recently uh, closed it. Mm. Oh yeah. Is that it? Yep. Yeah, and uh, the Sex Pistols. Oh yeah, of course. Oh, all the got the old back in those days. You know, I was I went down to see the That's awesome. To check it out. So, so I you know my musical thing. You know, I, I got you know my 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 likes and dislikes and, and, and what I would listen to, you know, is it, varied, varied. And so, but I just didn't know anything about Rob Zombie. And, you know, finally I found out he's a major rock star, right. a major uh, uh, recording artist and and and, and uh, has, has a huge following, mm-hmm. you know. But, but that's how I went down that road and we spent some time together and uh, talked about it and that was it. Next thing, next thing, I had my report. I reported to the set, and we started to shoot uh, the rejects, which I think is one of the best movies in uh, the last twenty years. Where did you guys shoot I that at? Huh? Where did you guys shoot that at? We shot that at Sable Ranch, out on the four, off the fourteen freeway, going towards the Palmdale Lancaster. Oh wow! Wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. We shot at Sable Ranch. They were shooting. Oh, what is that with Robert England and, uh, oh, God, 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 God. I can't think of what Robert England shot. They, they were shooting something uh, at the same time that Kane Hodder was 
stunt coordinator, and he was going for my show. <laughs> was it Freddy versus Jason? No. It wasn't Freddy versus Jason. It was something else. Oh, God, wasn't that zombie strippers thing, was it? <laughs> no, 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 no. It was, um, it was, it was Robert England. Okay. And, um, that Confederate flag. Oh, uh, 2001 Maniacs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. 2001 Maniacs, right. Exactly. So, they were shooting that on the table racks as well. And they were about 300 yards, maybe 400 yards away from where we were shooting. Oh, shit. Wow. And, uh, For a few dollars more. Good, bad, and ugly. Yeah. And and also, oh, wow. only shot the uh, thing with Charles Bronson. Oh my lord! That's uh, awesome. Where he, what, what the guy said on his, we the harmonica. Charles, he, he had uh, Bronson had his brother sitting yeah. on his, uh, standing on his shoulder, uh-huh. and, he, and he couldn't move, but his brother was hanging. He thought he had to move with the harmonica in his mouth. But they shot that there, there. Thank you enough. I, this has been absolutely fantastic. Oh, um, man, it's been great for me, too. It's been fun talking to you. It really has. Yeah, it's uh, not I don't know what I've enjoyed it more. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much for doing this. This has Thank been fantastic. Okay. Talk to you soon, okay? Hey, yeah, definitely. Be in touch. Thank you. Be in touch. I appreciate that. All right. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Silver has been gone for 40 years now. There's nothing back in there but animals. A lot. The old creep told you not to get off the road. What began as a vacation ended 
as a nightmare. You hell to pay now. <laughs> She thought she knew what the world was all about, but nothing prepared her for this. The hills have eyes. Oh, you going with my baby? Yeah, that way, Dick. A mother fighting for her child loses it in the worst possible way. I hit him with a tighter iron and I split his face wide open. That was a bad mistake. <laughs> I come back for you later, girly. Why are you doing this? The story of an American family who lost everything except the will to survive. Murdered, raped, burned, but not beaten. The hills have eyes. The story of one family's refusal to die. I'm gonna get those animals. The hills have eyes. A night of terror. A day of vengeance where no one was spared. No one. Kill the babe! Kill me! They fought back. Anything was a weapon. The family dog to the family car. It's working! The Hills Have Eyes, the most shocking, terrifying film you will ever see by Wes Craven, writer and director of The Last House on the Left. The Hills Have Eyes, the lucky ones died first. Beneath the city of New York are living catacombs, an endless maze of subterranean tunnels, unfit for anything human, unauthorized for anything experimental, Hold it! There's something moving up ahead in the tunnel! And unlikely to bring anyone down there. So... <laughs> they're coming up. Chud. Chud, check your basement and your bathroom. Keep off the street and try to hide. But remember, the dark is their place. The night is their time. And tomorrow, the only things living in the city of New York will be Chud. Chud. Cannibalistic. Humanoid. Underground. Dwellers. Ah, hello, fellow food lovers. I'm Phil Mignon, world-famous gourmet. In my travels, I've sampled some of the most exquisite foods the world has to offer. And that's why they've asked me to tell you all about a charming new eatery located right downtown. As uh, you can see, the atmosphere is lovely. But, of course, the uh, finest attribute of this quaint cafe is the marvelous cuisine by the way what is the special ingredient in the tuesday surprise well, if i told you that it wouldn't be a surprise anymore would it they're um, <clears throat> mouth-watering specialties <laughs> will have you as they say licking your lips <laughs> uh, only the freshest natural ingredients are selected the first ingredients we need are two stomachs from a couple of trams. For use in their carefully guarded <clears throat> recipes. I'd give my right arm for that secret recipe. Ah! Uh, yes, the chef puts a bit of himself into every succulent dish. Oh, and he's always pleased to serve you to your friend. Uh, sh shouldn't that be serve you and your friends? Uh, no. Uh, 
Um, your gracious hostess will direct you to your table. Where you will dine as if there's no tomorrow. <laughs> So, breeze on down and don't let anything stand in your way. Oh, uh, this Epicurean haven is called Blood Diner. You got that right, homo. So, this is Phil Mignon. Ah, saying, bon appetit. Oh, mommy. The Blood Diner. First they greet you, then they eat you. No one under 17 admitted. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Knock, knock. Versus. The Predator. Predator. Rated R. The Battle of the Century starts Friday, June 12th. 100,000 years ago, it came to our galaxy. Trapped in the wasteland of Antarctica. It could not escape. Now, it is free to become one of us. John Carpenter's The Thing, rated R. 100,000 years ago, it came to our galaxy. Trapped in the wasteland of Antarctica, it could not escape. Now, it is free to become one of us. John Carpenter's The Thing, rated R.